How to implement insertion sort in C Sharp. Insertion sort is like sorting cards. We start at position 2, aka index 1 in our array, and then we compare that element to every element before that index in the array until we find an element that is less than the current element. And then we move to the next position in the array and do the same procedure for the next position in the array and go through the rest of the array until all our elements are sorted. Insertion sort is big O of n squared, aka quadratic time. It has a constant space complexity because it is an in-place sort. It is also a stable sorting algorithm. Here are our example arrays that we pass into the algorithm for our best average and worst case. Here's our call to insertion sort passing in our array. Here's our method insertion sort taking in our array. Here's the index of our outer loop, index i. We set it equal to 1 because we want to look at the second element of the array at the first index and then compare it to all previous indexes. In this case, it would just be index 0. We wouldn't want to use index 0 because there would be nothing to compare to, so there's no point in looking at 0 initially. Then we set j to i. And j is the initial index of our inner loop. And here's a temporary variable for swapping the elements. So here's our outer loop. We go from 1 to the end of the array. So we check if each element is in the proper position. As you can see, i is equal to 1, and we're set 1 to j on the first iteration. So we're setting the index of the current item that we're looking at. As long as there is a number that is larger to the left, and we haven't gone through each element of the array, then we swap our current element one position backwards. So we check if j is greater than 0. Since it's at 1, it is. And we know we're not at the beginning of our array. And then we also make sure that j is less than j minus 1, aka the current element is less than the previous element. As you can see, at position 1 in our average case array, we have a 4. And at position 0, we have a 10. And so 4 is less than 10, so we swap 4 and 10. So we put 4 in our temporary variable, and then we put the element at j minus 1, which is 10, into position 1, which is 4 currently. And then we put our 4 at j minus 1, so moving our 4 back. Now our list has 4 at position 0 and 10 at position 1. And now we decrement j. Since j is 0, we break out of the inner loop and then we increment to the next position of i to look at. Since i is still less than the length of our list, we continue. Set j to the current i of 2. Then we compare position 2 with position 1, so 8 and 10, and 8 is less than 10, so we're going to swap 8 and 10. Now we're comparing 8 and 4. Since 8 is not less than 4, we do not swap them. We just continue. Now we're looking at index 3, so we're comparing 6 and 10. And we're going to swap 6 and 10. Now we compare 6 and 8, and we'll swap 6 and 8. Now we compare 6 and 4, so position 1 and 0, and 6. 6 is greater than 4. We do not swap them. We continue the next iteration of the loop. And we continue this until all our elements are sorted. As you can see, our array is sorted in ascending order. 4, 6, 7, 8, 10. Here is an example of the worst case version of this sorting algorithm. This occurs when our array is in reverse sorted order. So we have 10, 8, 7, 6, 4. So we would have n minus 1 comparisons and n minus 1 swaps, giving us big O of n squared. Here's the average case we just went over, giving us big theta of n squared. And here's the best case scenario when the array is already sorted in ascending order. All we have to do is a single comparison for each element in the array. So we have big omega of n. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.